Hello, this is Jenny and Lachey for July FOMCA Moments. Thank you for joining us. Hello, everybody, and um, welcome to FOMCA Moments for July. We're glad you could um, attend in with us today. Um, we are the Friends of Madison County Animals, and we're here to talk about um, two different things today um, that will be helpful for your furry friends. Yes, and so our two topics today, we're going to share just a little bit of information about tips for training puppies, and then we're going to shift gears to talk about feral cats. Um, these are two big issues at the heart of our mission to work to improve the lives of animals in Madison County since 1995. Before we get there, I do want to um, just remind folks that you can navigate to www.fomca.org and on our webpage there, there is a portal of, that you can, if you feel led, to donate uh, to help us with our mission. And we also keep track of the clinic hours and the hours of operation for our office on the Marshall Island. So um, I encourage everybody to nav navigate to the website to get the most current information. And we also wanted to give a shout out and a thank you to our Madison Public Library System for posting our phone moments on their website. Um, and there is the website there at www.madisoncountylibrary.net where you can find these in the future. And we try to do about one phone moment a month. And right now we're kind of running at the end of the month on, on a cycle where we get these published at the end of the month. So bear with us. We, we are working to get ahead with these and, and hopefully, hopefully you find these short little bits of information about what FOMCA is doing in the community um, to help families with their furry friends, as Jenny likes to put it. Um, you find that information useful. So uh, to go ahead and get started for today, we uh invited Kelsey Lawson from the Meadow Ranch a few a couple of months ago and uh, she is located her ranch is actually located um on Fisher Branch if you're familiar with the area kind of off 2570 uh, or uh, I guess that's 213 not 2570 yet but 213 between um the Grapevine community where I live uh, or between Mars Hill and Marshall. So uh, it's very easy. She is right there off the side of Fisher Branch, just past uh, like where Helen Hunter's tax service is for you locals who may be watching this. Um, so uh, she's easy to get to. Uh, my daughter and I recently took our puppy, Rosie, to go see Kelsey uh, for her obedience classes and it has made a world of difference uh, for Rosie. She is a, a just, she's a good tempered dog, but she is just high energy. And so uh, she really helped my nine-year-old daughter kind of uh, assume the role of alpha and get Rosie under control. So I cannot say enough great things about Kelsey. Um, also, one of the things that the FOMCA board is talking about is how can we be um, a force in the community for helping people learn how to handle high energy dogs. We certainly believe that uh, through puppy training and through education, we can prevent animal abuse, animal neglect uh, by helping um, folks learn how to communicate with their animals. So uh, Kelsey and the work that she's doing is just one piece of this. Um, and as part of that, Kelsey was good enough to give us her top five puppy tips through the Meadow Ranch. I so love that this, little backpack. The little oh, backpack. I know. Isn't he so Isn't that cute? cute? <laughs> so tip number one, we're going to try, we'll talk about crate training. So crate training is a valuable life skill for every dog to have. If your pup ever needs to stay at a vet, they will likely be in a crate. If they're comfortable with a crate, they won't have the added stress of that along with whatever reason they may be at the vet. Crates help keep a puppy safe if they have to be left home alone overnight or when traveling. 
crates should not be used to discipline or correct your puppy. Think of the crate as your puppy's um, den or room, a place your puppy can have that is just theirs, a safe place for them. Begin slow, positive association treats, crate entry games and nap times in the crate all help your pup acclimate to the crate and enjoy using it. Very good tips. Yes, we have the crate in our living room of all places and it is definitely Rosie's go-to spot. We do too with Lily and she really likes her crate. She will go down there and she likes to sleep in there and it's definitely an, an easy something for her. So tip number two, don't let them out of your sight. Puppies are like children. The younger they are, the more attention they require. If you're with your puppy, you should be keeping an eye on them. Don't let them wander somewhere else without you. Use a gate or find another way to keep them by you. Most puppies begin to sniff and try to walk away if they need to potty. Accidents happen when you aren't actively watching them. And I've noticed that about Rosie. I noticed that she goes to the door and she, you know, watches us and if she does start sniffing around we know it's time to let her outside yeah. yeah if you can't watch them utilize the crate and put them in for a nap for a little while tip number three keep your puppy on a leash so puppies get into everything just like little children having a leash on them gives them access gives you access to them at all times we are talking about the puppy they're not children if they get into something they shouldn't have a leash on allows you to step on the leash or pick it up and reel them in to take anything you need from them. And leashes are instrumental in teaching your pup to come. That is a really important command because having just recently been on a camping trip where the park rangers were constantly talking about the bear threat, you know, if you're out with your dog and you do come across something really dangerous, having them be obedient to come when you call could be life-saving. Absolutely. Tip number four, never chase your puppy. Chase is a game puppies can play with each other, not a game I play with them. If I need something from my puppy, I want them to bring it to me. This is where having them on a leash comes in handy. If they have a leash on, I never have to chase them to get something I need from them. I just bring them to me and teach them this is how it should always be. This was a, a learning curve for uh, me and my daughter, Zoe. Uh, we definitely chase after Rosie, but uh, since we learned this in practice at puppy classes, um, this has been a game changer for yes. us. And you notice too, if you ever, if your dog gets a hold, your puppy gets a hold of something you don't want them to have in their mouth and you try to chase them, they do think that's a game. Woohoo! I'm definitely not gonna give it to you now because this yeah. is fun. <laughs> And then her last and biggest tip, come is the top command. Do you want to take this, Jenny? Yes. So come is one of, if not the most important thing you can teach your puppy or any dog. Your dog should be able to come to you if you call, no matter what else is going on around them, squirrels and everything. Never call your dog if you don't know for sure they will come. If you call them and they don't come, you are just teaching them to ignore you. Having a leash on at all times allows you to get a hold of the leash before you call them. This way you can say your come command one time and then make it happen with the leash. I like that. Come should always be consistently one command and then making it happen. Run away, make coming fun. It's always a party when they get to you. Never correct your dog for coming. And that was something we practiced in puppy classes was to take like a favorite tug toy or chew toy mm -hmm. and run with it and get the, the dog to come to us. Um, and then um, when the dog comes, always reward. So we thank Kelsey for those tips. Um, also, we want to let you know that uh, her website at www.themeadowranch.com uh, you can go there and register for classes now. And uh, if you hear this message, you can use the code FOMCA for $10 off your session. Um, she has classes listed on her website for puppy obedience, agility. You can reach out to her personally. Maybe the course schedule that's published there might not work for you, but you're interested in the future. 
uh, for you know a schedule that could work for you. In uh, that case, you could reach her at themeadowranch at gmail.com. Um, her number is 630-639-9336. So we thank you to Kelsey and thank you for working with FOMCA to get good information out to dog owners. And now we want to transition uh, from being a dog owner to being a cat owner. And we have some exciting news. Uh, FOMCA just recently received a grant uh, uh, from Petco for intake diversion, spay and neuter and community cat organizations. And what this award means is that we are going to focus on feral community cats. We are going to focus on getting uh, adoptable cats to uh, families who can adopt them. Uh, we are going to focus on um, spreading information and education out to the community um, and try to collect data about um, where are we as a county with our feral cat community cat populations? Where is the need and uh, where can we help? We won't know how to help until uh, we collect the data and we find out, you know, where are uh, the feral cat populations. So I had the opportunity to sit uh, down with Ann Zook, uh, who has been working with the FOMCA office for over nine years, mostly focused on um, TNR uh, trapping feral cats, working in the communities. You can see on her arm here, I didn't capture this part of the interview, but she's all scratched up because she was actually at a lady's house the day before this interview, uh, trying to, to catch some of her ferals and uh, had, sometimes the job is rough, uh, had a little bit of a difficult time of it, but she is tirelessly works um, in the community working with residents um, on their feral cat issues. So I just took a few snippets from the interview, uh, she first defines a feral cat versus just a, a stray cat, which I think is an, a, an important place to start the conversation. Um, she then kind of gets into what, what are the issues with feral cats? Uh, why is it such a bad thing to have a feral cat colony on your land? And then she starts getting into um, tips and strategies for trapping. So um, I'll just play this video clip a little bit and then we'll move to um, how to set a trap for feral cat. The first thing about it, in my opinion, is that they're reproducing high numbers and the cats are homeless cats. And so you know, the more kids they're born, the bigger the problem is and they suffer. So. Um, you know, that's the worst part about it. Uh, some of these cats are called community cats. And that means they're free roaming, they're roaming anywhere that in the city or in the country. And by definition, we have for homeless cats, we have stray cats and we have feral cats. And the difference is a stray cat is usually a cat that was owned and has been abandoned or lost. They're usually friendly when they come up to you or find me wherever. And uh, they can usually get taken care of easily. The feral cat is a, a cat that's never been owned, um, lives outside, and avoids all human contact. And so he has a difficult challenge. And uh, we have so many babies. And the cycle keeps going. And the cats have different uh, situations. A, a city cat that's feral is in a city like Asheville trying to deal with getting food, traffic, lots of people, dogs, all kinds of situations that you see in the city. The cats out here in Madison County have problem of finding food and the biggest problem they have is predators. Yeah. Sure. And the feral cat is that they're fearful of humans. And so when we are going to trap them, 
the challenge is that you have to get down hungry enough that his uh, hunger will overtake his fear and he can go into the trap. And so when we start trapping, we hold the food, sometimes they're not. Uh, it takes a day, two days, it may take a week to figure it all out. Can't let them go too long without food or they disappear. You yeah. can get them that way. Yeah. But you can go several days and the food is only in the trap. It can't be anywhere else on the property because they're not going in. And if it's a colony where somebody's been feeding them and taking care of them regularly every day, then they're going to keep coming back and trying to get fed and they'll see the trap and Dish and they'll walk around the trap, and sometimes they touch it and it sets a trap off, and when it bangs, that really scares them. You know, eventually you can get a lot of them yeah. on, the, on the porch or in the barn or wherever. But the whole. So, Anne has been doing this work, like I said, for, um, for many years, and she is a great asset to FOMCA. But she is also one person. So, um, so when we got this award uh, to to start this initiative, um, we are certainly going to be working with Anne and the folks at Forever Friends, and um, and it's going to take some time. It's not going to be a quick fix. Um, but like I said before, um, the most one of the most important parts of this initiative is education getting the information out to folks about how to do this. So I found this short five minute video about setting traps on YouTube. Um, let's just take a look at this. Maybe I didn't insert the video correctly. Jenny, I may need to come back. this. Let me see if I can find it directly on YouTube. Okay, here we go. They get you in the door with a free weekend trip or dinner or sometimes just a decent gift card. Then they tell you it'll take your paper plate full of baited food Leave a little bait trail so it's enticing for him to go in there. You can take a couple of smaller pieces, put them around the trap to attract him over there. He'll eat those smaller pieces and feel safe. Here's what's important. Take the food, you put the plate under the trap, not in it. Press it down so the food comes up between the wires. Make sure the towel is over the trap before you walk away. If the towel is not on the trap, when the door comes down, the cat's going to panic. He may severely hurt himself. If you put that towel over the trap and he goes in there and the door goes down, he will think that he's just in a dark little place. He'll settle down and will not hurt himself. Okay. And the, that do not feed feral cats 36 hours before trapping, that's what Ann was talking about. They have to be hungry. Um, let me back up this video just a bit to show you about setting the trap. We'll also make the bait last longer. So this is the food that I feed. Well, it's going to make a really good taste. This is the back door of the tomahawk. It's a safety door. It has a latch on it. I'm going to unlock the latch, put the latch down. And once that latch is down, then you can lift the door up. When you're putting the door back on, you need to make sure that latch is up. And then you're going to lock it through the clasp and you're gonna to wanna to check it, and make sure it's really locked. So if that kitty jumps around, he's not gonna get that door open. Next thing is to take the door off and you're actually going to put the food in the trap. This is what a lot of people um, kind of look over. But what we want is we're only going to put the food, especially that oil, on the trigger plate of the trap. We don't want to put too much and we're going to scent the trigger plate so that the whole trigger plate smells really good. But there's not a lot of food on there. We're going to put the 
bait that we have at the very edge of the trigger plate. It's that plate that we want the cat to step on, but we don't want the cat to fill up by eating all the bait on it first. Put the door back in, put the latch back up, and you're done with the back door of the tomahawk. The side view of the tomahawk, and this is the business end. This is a trap door. You're going to set it using three steps. One, push in, two, pull up, and three, set the little trigger over the brass roller. There it goes. You want the kitty to actually step on that plate. And when he does, the door is gonna come down and he's gonna be safely in and then when you're trapped, you're going to take your trap and put it alongside a wall. Cats like to travel the paths of walls. And we've seen this mm -hmm. part, so um, let me go back to my PowerPoint. So some of the things um, that we want you to remember, if you if you are someone or you know someone who has a feral cat uh, community cat colony, um, there is a waiting list. Uh, Anne is only one person, uh, and we are working to um, to organize a volunteer list. If you are interested in volunteering to help in this effort, by all means, please call the FOMCA office. We need volunteers. Um, but there is a waiting list. We are uh, working to, to help this issue, but working to solve the issues of feral community cats is not a quick fix. But the number one thing that you can do today is call the FOMCA office to add your name to the list in order uh, to be uh, on there so that when we work our way down the list for assistance with ferals, we can, we can get to you. Um, also, like we uh, said before, if you're interested in volunteering or if you know someone that's passionate about animals and knows about trapping, um, please uh, give us a call at 828-649-9798. Um, Jenny, is there anything else that? No, just thank you everybody for um, taking the time to watch our little FOMCA moment. And please reach out to us at the FOMCA office if we can do anything to help. Thank you.